This is a trip I did to Iraqi Kurdistan in the spring of 2019. I hope to share with all of you what I experienced as best as I can. In the end, I hope some of you have the pleasure of seeing this incredible place for yourself someday. With a population of just under a million, Erbil is the largest city in Iraqi Kurdistan. Our first stop was the Citadel's north entrance. The Citadel is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's at least 8,000 years old and widely considered to be the oldest continually inhabited city on Earth. Most of the buildings you see here are from the Ottoman times, but underneath lie layers and layers of civilizations on top of each other. In 2007, the government started renovation, paying 840 families to move and resettle, but allowing one to stay as to not technically lose this historical status. Once it's restored, the ideal size will be around 50 families living up here. The south side leaves you with a great view of Erbil's most famous plaza. The dozens of civilizations who conquered this mound kept improving the natural fortification, so no one knows how it would have originally looked. The current owner's father was mainly repairing hunting rifles during Saddam's regime when he started business in the 80s, but on the side, he was secretly repairing the Kurdish Peshmerga's weapons as well. This eventually landed him in Abu Ghraib prison until 2003. His story, showing continued perseverance and sacrifice to the Peshmerga cause, often doing repairs on the front lines for free, is a humbling thing to be around. It was curious to see some Turkish pseudonym brands and some toy airsoft lookalikes as well. Erbil was a center of Ishtar worshippers, the Mesopotamian goddess that influenced the Greek Aphrodite in the holiday Easter. She appears on more myths from Sumer than any other deity. I know I will only get a small glimpse of what this city has to offer. During this visit, I didn't make a purchase, but it was nice to see the genuine hustle and bustle. One thing I couldn't film, but impressed me, was the section of the money changers. With electronic counting equipment, small transparent locked cash enclosures, they kept stacks of currencies and were quick and friendly to do exchanges. I didn't notice a single armed individual or any marked security. My only point is that it was peaceful and friendly and impressive. The center of Erbil was really a sight to see. However, there was a place I had seen in recent news pieces and documentaries. A place on the newly built outskirts of town where the young men are bucking the conservative trends and doing their own thing. A fashion club. A movement that has caught international eyes. I had to go check it out. <laughs> well, my name is Ahmed Nawzad. I'm one of the co-founders and we started four years ago the project. First of all, it was social media wise and now we're a little bit lucky. Now we have our own space. So let's check to the tour. Basically, we import the clothes from Italy and Britain. Uh, we make all locally produced here. It's locally production from three-piece, two-piece, coat, vest, trousers, you name it, it's all here. We also take care of the environment as well. That's why we build this wall. It has many philosophies behind it. Keep it the uh, world safe and green. And as well as we achieved over 60 countries, we've been published over 60 countries around the world. So then the targets will come on it later on. So we got also for the married room, pride, shirts as well, it's all locally done. And we also have 
uh, this book section. Uh, food, like food, is basically like clothes. Clothes is basically like food. Everybody has a different taste, different desire. And uh, we can also choose your own color for the shirts over here. And uh, it's a many kind. It's a lot more than that. And then over there we have um, the bespoke section, which is you can choose a fabric. Our collection is from Reda in Siruti. It's from Italy. We will order it. The fabric will come. We will make it custom made for the client female or male, there's no big difference. And then let's go over there. Those are not ready yet. We have a barber shop as well with our own local product, beard oil, and so on. The client sitting there getting a nice trim. And here we go for the coffee shop. Let's go here. All of it, none smoking area. So it's not smoking area. As you can see, the tailoring is tailoring now. What is very important for is the handwork. And they don't use a lot of machines. It's more handwork what they do. And they will sit here so it's more light than the other part. And they're working on the best. Well, actually, that there is a blazer for a lady. A beautiful one. A very beautiful jacket. And coffee, tea. You name it, it's all here, but we do serve food, it's a coffee shop. And let's go to the outside section. And here we are. It's basically uh, the balcony of our place with a beautiful view of the urban city. And we can also smoke outside here. And we do have a nice shisha as well, right over there. What a great afternoon. It was amazing to get to relax and get a cut in a locally made shirt from these guys. I wish them all the success in the world, and I truly hope to be a repeat customer someday. Heading back towards the center, you encounter what used to be the exact site of one of Saddam Hussein's army bases. In 2006, a huge park was completed here in less than a year. It's named after a Kurdish deputy prime minister killed in a deadly suicide bombing in 2004. The rest of the victims of this event are remembered as well. We ended the day in the recently booming Christian part of Erbil, Ankawa. The story is that Jesus' apostle, St. Thomas, sent a die here who set up this town. He eventually became St. Thaddeus. Ankawa is now more like a small city rather than an ancient Christian village. And when ISIS gained power into the Nineveh plains northwest of here, many Assyrians who fled conflict chose this Christian borough as their new spot. The cathedral provided shelter for many refugees. It used to be part of the Catholic Church in the 16th century. Since then, it's been doing its own thing. Erbil already exceeded my expectations, so I was excited to see what the following days would bring. 